that another one of the 19 defendants in Georgia's election case now claims she was just following Trump's orders when she signed on to be a fake elector. In a new court filing, Kathy Latham's attorney writes, quote, Mrs. Latham was acting pursuant to the guidelines of the Constitution at the direction of the president of the United States. Latham's claim comes as Trump is trying to distance himself from some of his 18 co-defendants. I look at some of the other people. Now, I don't know a lot of those people. Uh, I don't even know that I've met a lot of those people. Those people have now all turned themselves into authorities, as has former President Trump, who made history last night, becoming the first president to have his mugshot taken. And Trump wasting no time trying to capitalize on the picture. His campaign is now selling T-shirts and other merchandise featuring the mugshot with the slogan, Never Surrender. Though, as the world witnessed, Trump did surrender to authorities yesterday, not long after his former chief of staff, Mark Meadows. And tonight, Meadows is gearing up for a major hearing. Monday, he's trying to move the case from Fulton County to a federal court, and it could have major implications for Trump and the case as a whole. We'll have much more on that in a moment. Sarah Murray is out front. So, Sarah, we just got a new court filing from District Attorney Fonnie Willis in this case. What's the latest here? That's right. I mean, in keeping with her sort of posture that she wants to move quickly with this case, she's informing all of the defendants and their attorneys that she is ready to go in mid-September to begin sharing discovery in this case. She's asked them for rather large USB drives to provide so that she can share this initial, initial batch of discovery. And look, she's already told the judge in this case that she would like to see it go to trial in October of this year, a date that many lawyers involved and not involved in this case think is unrealistic. Trump's team has already weighed in on this, saying that they oppose that October date, although they have not offered an alternative. And most importantly, we still haven't heard yet from the judge in terms of what he thinks is a reasonable schedule for this case. In the meantime, though, you've got 19 defendants. It's a little bit like herding cats. You're starting to see everyone make moves that they believe are in their best interest and not necessarily together. So today we also saw Sidney Powell, who was one of those attorneys who was working with Donald Trump in the aftermath of the 2020 election say that she wants a speedy trial in the Fulton County Superior Court. Uh, another one of these defendants, Ken Chesbrough, had previously told the judge that, and he had his court date set for October of 2023. The judge, though, made clear he was setting that for Chesbrough, not for everyone. We'll see what he does with the Sydney Powell request. Yeah, and Sarah, I mentioned that next major hearing in this case Monday. Tell us what we expect to see then. This is going to be interesting because it's an evidentiary hearing for Mark Meadows to try to move his case to federal court. He's also asked the federal court to just dismiss all the charges against him. So we've seen paperwork flying ahead of this hearing, and we've seen the district attorney's office lining up potential witnesses that they could call as part of their case that they want to make. Among them is Brad Raffensperger, who is, of course, the Georgia Secretary of State, the person Trump pressured to find the votes needed for him to win the state of Georgia. There's another Secretary of State official on there that got calls from Donald Trump as well as communications with Meadows and two attorneys who are also on the call working on behalf of the Trump campaign on the call between Trump and Raffensperger. So again, the DA's team is going to make the argument that Meadows was not working in his official capacity as a federal officer when he was meddling in the election in Georgia, and this should not move to federal court. And we'll wait to see how Meadows makes his case. But you can bet, Brianna, even though this is a, a hearing that is focused on the fate of Mark Meadows and all of this, there are going to be a lot of defendants who are watching to see how this plays out, including the former president's legal team. Yeah, they certainly will be. Sarah Murray, thank you so much for that. Out front now, former Trump White House lawyer, Ty Cobb. Uh, Ty, thanks for being with us. I, I first want to get your reaction to this new filing from Sidney Powell asking for a speedy trial. This, of course, comes after another co-defendant, Kenneth Chesbro, has made the same request. Where do you see this going? Uh, thank you for having me, Brianna. Nice to be on with you. Um, I think this is uh, a problem for Chesbro. Uh, because he had made a creative, gutsy move um, where his lawyer, who, by the way, is quite a talented lawyer, um, you know, uh, seemed to believe uh, if he could get uh, paired off by himself, uh, you know, he might have a good shot. Now, I'm not sure I agree with that, but, it, you know, um, uh, it, it's, it, it is a strategic move, and I admire those. Uh, and, but now he's in a situation where he may have to go to trial with Sidney Powell, which I have to say, of all the defendants, 
uh, in, in this entire case is the last person I would want to be alone in a courtroom with if I was another defendant. And why is that? Well, because, you know, everything, she, the problem she has is everything that she did was a lie. Uh, the evidence about, as to her claims, um, you, you remember, she's so far afield, she's on the Constellation uh, voting machine side of this. She's She had a theory about money, dark money moving through uh, Cuba and China uh, to uh, impact the... Um, uh, election, uh, you know, even even Rudy, you know, uh, characterized some of her theories as, you know, crackpot theories. So, you know, she's and 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 she went to federal court on behalf of, you know, the Trump campaign um, and Trump uh, and and sold these lies, attempted to sell them. Uh, there were no buyers, but you know, she has she has really, in my view, you know, the 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 most difficult case to defend of all the defendants. Yeah, and very interesting. He may have to then be linked to that here. So the next hearing, and we're watching this, you're watching this, it's Monday, Mark Meadows, he's pushing to move his case to federal court, saying that he was acting as a federal officer. DA Fonnie Willis said in a filing this week, quote, Meadows has not shown how his participation in a RICO enterprise that conspired to overturn an election had any relationship to his official duties, much less how his participation in such an agreement was necessary for him to perform as chief of staff. What do you think? So I think that uh, Ms. Willis, um, her arguments you know, make sense. On the other hand, they don't necessarily uh, direct themselves to the actual standard that's going to be applied. Um, you know, Judge Stephen Jones, who will hear those arguments, uh, is a very, very talented judge, very you know, strong judge. Uh, and uh, I think he's going to be listening very carefully uh, to uh, to Ms. Willis's factual claims because uh, superficially, at least, Meadows makes a compelling case that arranging calls, attending meetings, even vi even visiting federal facilities, you know, is are things that are within his job description. Now, there are problems with Meadows' argument, including some emails that he wrote and the fact that he wasn't a mere listener on the call to Raffensperger. Uh, remember that he, uh, uh, he strongly objected uh, and argued with uh, the state officials about their claims of uh, very few dead voters having voted. He was insisting you know, that the numbers were much higher and in the thousands. Um, and so he, he was not a passive participant in those calls. And, and that may get that may get Willis over the hump on that. It, then that's something we're looking for on Monday for sure. So Trump is now the first former president with a mugshot. Our sources say that he wanted to appear defiant in his photo, that he put a lot of thought into this. He chose not to smile. And that was obviously very purposeful here. Jail records listed him as six foot three and 215 pounds. Those are numbers that were self-reported. What is your reaction? Well, I noticed he didn't include his 40 yard dash time and make it in the uh, four three range. So um, I'm glad he could hold back on that, but 215, no way. I mean, what do you th think about that though? Is that, I mean, does that have any material value if you believe that no, he's no, not telling not the really. truth? Or? I mean, it's just, it's just another insight into Trump's psyche and, you know, how, how driven he is by uh, uh, whatever facts that he can get out that he thinks will make, it, make him more appealable to others. So, Ty, when do you think that all of this will wrap up? Obviously, we're looking at some, a couple cases moving very quickly, but the larger, tr uh, tranche of defendants here so i i do think in the in the georgia cases i mean there's a good chance they could still be arguing about uh what court um uh, this would be tried in federal or state court uh a year from now after after appeals um i think this is an appealable issue um i think jones you know 
even if it even if it isn't an immediate interlocutory appeal, I think Jones might uh, certify it as such. Um, you know, this is the first time that a former president uh, and you know uh, his colleagues have been charged with uh, a heinous crime like this. This is the first presidential former presidential mugshot you know we've ever seen. Um, and while he looks like a Batman villain uh, in in his mugshot. Uh, he's still entitled to all the rights and uh, uh, privileges of a criminal defendant. Uh, so he'll get a hearing uh, on, on all these issues. And I think it could I think it could take, as I've said, at least two years before Willis gets the bulk of this trial um, to court. I, th I do think uh, under Georgia law, which is quite demanding, that it is highly likely that uh, Powell and uh, Chesbro uh, do go to trial quickly. Uh, I'm not sure how that how that will work out. I, I personally think they, they're in great danger, uh, but uh, it's their choice. Yeah, that is a, a long way off. Ty Cobb, thank you so much. We appreciate your time tonight. My, my pleasure. Nice to be with you.